Are you there? Yes, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm glad you can hear me. This is a. I'm glad I tuned in. This is a very interesting show. <laughs> Uh, very interesting. Um, seeing you guys go back and forth like this. Uh, this guy, uh, this guy that you had on the line earlier, this the Arab guy. Um, I hope he's still listening. I hope he's still listening, man. I pray for this guy because this guy, he's very lost, very lost. He remind me of myself. I don't think I don't know if um, Christian Prince can hear me right now, but a few years ago. I used to uh, I used to uh, argue with Christian Prince on the uh, internet um, when I was a, a Muslim and I was a Muslim upon the Salafi Dawah, very hard headed, and uh, he used to uh, try to correct me and uh, straighten me out like he's doing this this gentleman that you just had on the line. Um, another thing I wanted to bring uh, wanted to bring back up that you brought up earlier was um, the uh, the situation with the monks from Najran. Um, that's an interesting thing that Christian Prince said about how the, um, the monks challenged Muhammad to debate, to a formal debate. Muhammad refused, and instead he challenged them to curse themselves. Um, shows you that debating is not something that's not for this from Islam. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of challenging of uh, Muslims to debate and to uh, critically think about Islam and the Quran and Hadith. But that's really not their thing. That's not really a, a part of their religion. Maybe we should, uh, I don't know, maybe we need to think of something else, uh, think of a different angle to come at them from. I don't know. But that's just uh, my little two cents that I wanted to add to the program you guys keep up the good work, and I pray for you. Thank you, and God bless. Well, you know, just to, uh, to mention, because I, want, I like to give reference always when I talk about things. I, I want to say thank you to the brother, and I'm so glad for him that he left Islam. Uh, maybe he can remind me of himself because I spoke to thousands and thousands of Muslims trying to help them to understand Islam. Even the person who just called before, I am not against you, by the way. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to, to save you from this cult. This is a disgusting cult. Let me show you what your prophet said about Islam, how to debate, because the brother here, he mentioned that again. Uh, we mentioned it before. We didn't give reference. In chapter 3, verse number 61, it says, Those who they are asking you for questions and debate, what do you do? Say to them, invite your children and our children. Invite your women and our women. Invite yourself and ourselves. And let us ask God to curse the one who is lying what kind of debate is debate? What kind of a prophet is prophet? Imagine someone come to Jesus, says to him, Jesus, I have a question for you. And then Jesus says, oh, invite your women, I invite my women. Invite your children, I invite my children. Invite yourself, I invite myself. And let us invoke God to curse the one who is lying. That is the most stupid things ever I heard. Because simply, if a Muslim, he believes in Islam, he is not lying. This is what he believes in. If someone is a Hindu debating me about Hinduism, he is not lying. This is what he believes. So even the, the idea of the debate is a stupid. The idea of understanding that the one is debating you is lying is a stupid. At least like now I understand that Muslims, they lie based on their religion. But usually a person who believes in something, he's not lying. If, some, if a Muslim says to me, I believe in Muhammad as a prophet, should I say to him, let us curse the one is lying? Why? This is stupid. He, be, he believes in that. He's not lying. He believed that Muhammad is a prophet. I believe that Jesus is my Lord. So who is lying here? There's nobody lying. Not him, not me. I can be wrong, he can be wrong, but this is not about lying. So Muhammad, he had, he don't, he don't even have the simple basic understanding, but I will tell you why Muhammad, he made that statement. Because Muhammad is a person of disability. He cannot answer. This is why in chapter 5, verse 101 says, ask not questions. Verse 102, it says, because former generations, they asked the same questions and they lost their faith. So Muhammad, he forbid questions. Muhammad, he will never debate you because simply he will lose the debate. And this is why Muslims actually, ABN and every TV channel I, I, ever I go in, they, don't, they cannot find me one Muslim to debate me because they run away. They choose their, their cherries. They, they try to find a soft Christian who know not, nothing about Islam to debate. 
But when it's come to someone, he can burn Islam and they run away. I advise you, the one who called before, to get my books. Maybe you can learn something. I have the deception of Allah to show you how God of Islam is nothing but deception. And I have my, my second book, which is Quran and Science in Depth. You know, I would love to give it to you even as a gift. So maybe you can be saved and you can know the, the, the true Lord, the one who says, love your enemy. The one who says, if somebody asks you for your, your coat, give him your address. The one who says, go and teach and preach all the world, all nations, not the black, not the white, not the Arab. This is Jesus. So I invite you to him. Wow, that is so powerful. I mean, honestly, God bless you, Christian. I, you know, I come across, uh, you know, Muslims who, who uh, just clearly, uh, they, they don't know uh, really their, their true uh, doctrine. They don't really understand. Uh, and when you begin to question them, uh, they do and they will question their faith. So I, I believe we discovered something and I would like to even make sure we critically understand. So one way of really, really getting uh, uh, the faith of, of Christianity and of Jesus Christ to the Muslim is simply to challenge them. Now, the Bible is really clear about being ready in season and out of season to have a strong faith and have a reason for why you actually believe in what you believe in. So we've noticed and we've discovered uh, that show that in, Muslim, in, in, in Islam, you don't have a true reason of why you believe. In fact, you want to discourage any type of critical uh, uh, analyzing of what you believe or your faith because if we really share truth to falsehood or even what you perceive to be truth, you will realize that it's false. So the more we challenge Islam, the more we challenge uh, uh, the discrepancies in, in moral and unethical uh, practices of Sharia law and all of these uh, things, you will continue to break down uh, the, the, the false facade of Islam. And the deception, and that's very important, the deception uh, that is, is Islam, and I, and I believe that is the exact same way that we should challenge uh, these individuals. So we have a break. Hello and welcome back. Uh, we're finishing our segment. Uh, does Sharia law uh, actually equate to human solutions? Uh, does Sharia law uh, give solutions to humankind uh, or to hum humanity? And uh, we have Dr. Uh, Bill Warner here, and uh, we would like to have you, sir, finish out and uh, have any statements uh, concerning uh, just the finishing out of uh, the show. We've had such great debate, and uh, we've had Christian Prince, who has been just a dynamic uh, minister of truth, uh, to uh, just shed light on the falsehood of Islam and the falsehood of Sharia law. And, and just understanding uh, that this is a religion of deception, a religion of hate. Uh, so Dr. Bill Warner, uh, we would like to have you uh, share your feedback uh, to uh, finish out uh, the segment. First off, let me say that one of the wonderful things about ABN is what we've just been experiencing here. In America, there's very little open discussion about the truth of Islam. And this is the reason that I come on to ABN, is because that it's one of the few venues where you can actually hear Islam discussed in a factual basis. And the other nice thing about watching ABN is like today, I've never met Mr. Prince before, but I've got to tell you that one day I would like to meet him in person because he is a man that, the kind of guy that I like, he knows what he's talking about and he's very firm in it. Today we see people being shy with their opinions. Political correctness has made liars out of many of us. And so people like Mr. Prince are a real breath of fresh air. And the whole business that ABN in which is involved in, which is like an open discussion, I'm a scientist by training. And in science advances by debate, not authoritative reasoning. That is, just because a man is a scientist doesn't mean you can't challenge what he says. And with ABN we see that we're actually indulging in critical thought using factual reasoning. And so uh, th this is a wonderful show. The only problem with it is, is we don't have a thousand of them across America. I do a radio show every Friday from 11 to 12, and I, it's talk radio, and I say when we get off the air, I don't know why more people don't want to discuss political Islam, because it, it, it is fascinating to learn about. It's a world that's different from ours, and ABN is a place that's different from ours, and ABN is a place that gives us a place to learn about such a different world that is called Islam.